right, so I have the recording on. So because my restreaming, okay, let me. Because restreaming is not restreaming like it needs to be restreaming. And I notice all of a sudden now restreaming is putting broadcast up all on the various platforms on Facebook. Everywhere I go, I see restream, restream, restream. Well, come on, restream. You got to work for Mama Pam. Because, see, I joined them before they got all famous. I joined them last month, month or so ago. And they were doing real, real good until they changed. They did something with their little platform thing and... So now my broadcasts are blurry. When I go back and I look at my restream broadcasts, they are all blurred. You can hear the voice. The sound is there. But the uh, Maka Janza, is that? Oh, you're at Mo, Moka Hanza, FSK. Praise God. I don't know what you're saying, but God bless you. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So it is five minutes to the 7 p.m. read. Yes, Stephanie did call me. Stephanie called me just a few minutes ago. Stephanie called me just a few minutes ago, Jessica. Praise God. Um, and she ordered some stuff. So that's a blessing. I'll get it in the mail to her in the next day or two. Okay, so what I do... Okay, now I can't pre-read it because I got the camera. I need some other gadgets. One, two, three, four. All my gadgets are being used. I guess I'll have to come back and read this prayer. That's what I'll have to do. Because I see you, Lord. I see Marilyn. Is that what MD is from? Marilyn? MD? I think. I think. I think. You know, digging through them clothes. I was uh, packing clothes and going through stuff and putting stuff together for this move. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Carl. Hey, my cross the street neighbor. He was the big, the uh, elder Brother, elder person in the neighborhood. I was a little kid, a little six-year-old. He was a teenager, and I was a little kid. And the crew that lived across the street from me, and it was always so nice to us. They were always so nice. They were also they were one of the first African American businesses in Pittsburgh. Any of y'all in the Pittsburgh Antioch area listening on these fifteen broadcasting platforms? The Crudups, C R U C R D U P, in Pittsburgh, lived on Odessa. Had the first African American store in Pittsburgh down on Fourth or Third Street, one of them streets. But anyway, thank God for you uh, attending. I praise God for you. Um, God bless you, Autism King. God bless you. God bless you, Autism King. Uh, Monica, I see you. I see you, Mamie. I see you. Got two people from Washington. Monica and Mamie are both in the state of Washington. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, praise God, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Talking so much, all these different platforms, going all these people's looking at me. I got all these different people. Oh, I know. I was saying I usually broadcast what I'm getting ready to read to you. But we'll read it. We're getting ready to. We're not 7 o'clock yet. So this is what I do every day when I first get up. I come on before I do my broadcast. I bring on Live Me. Live Me has a Mama Pam platform. Live Me has a Pam Port platform. So I bring those on and I read. What I've been doing is 90 days. Of healing prayers. 90 days of healing prayers. Baltimore. Okay, praise God. Praise God. Baltimore, Muhammad Abizid. God bless you, Muhammad Abizid. Thank you for joining us, sir. Praise God. Um, so I've been praying these prayers since July the 1st. I'm reading a book. I'm reading a book. And in the book, this is what the gentleman at the end of the book is 90 days of prayers for healing. Whatever you got, whatever you need healing from, we're believing God for our healing. Regardless of what the body act like. Cause my body be acting crazy since I've been praying for the healing. Seems like I just can't get enough energy. I'll just be tired. But let's pray. Let's get into the prayer because it's going to be time for my uh, 7 p.m. read. The prayer is only about four or five minutes long. So today is August the 5th. It's a Wednesday. Day number 36. This is day number 36. Uh, Matthew, the 10th chapter, verses 7 through 8, NIV version of the Word of God. And it reads, He called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons freely ye have received freely ye shall give. 
Praise God. Now, this one I'm getting ready to read is God drives out. Ooh, excuse me. God drives out evil spirits. And this is um, God speaking to you. This is God talking to you. God drives out evil spirits of affliction. Let me empower you with the healing virtue and power that has the ability to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to cure the disease, to give sight to the blind, to open deaf ears, to cleanse those impure and deliver those who are oppressed by evil influences. I've sent the Holy Spirit to you to help you and to raise you up to be effective for your generation. Arise today, my child. And know that I have sent my Holy Spirit, who will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will equip, it will teach, it will counsel, and inspire you to do what you do not do in your own strength. Depend on me to show you what you possess within. Embrace the greatness that has been imparted before the foundation of the world. I've given you a tremendous anointing by the Holy Spirit. To be the conduit of healing and deliverance. Even though you may be in need of a personal touch from me. Look within yourself. And discover the gift of me in you. And unlock your potential to be a world changer. It is I, my child. Understand that I have freely given you the gift. And freely release it to those in need of the healing, delivering power of the Holy Ghost. Receive your healing today. Receive, receive, receive. And on the back side, the scriptures, Job 19, 21, John 14, 16, and 26. The healing prayer. You deliver me from hurt, harm, and danger. You set my feet on a straight and narrow path that leads to eternal life. Keep my mind stayed on you that I will not entertain anything that doesn't represent you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And the healing confession and commands activation. It says, I confess and I command that there are no illegal spirits invading my space and are evicted by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I confess that Jesus endured the cross for me. And I'm liberated by, by faith in Christ. I confess and I command and declare that there is no condemnation unto those who are in Christ Jesus. For I am protected by his blood. I confess that by the authority of Jesus in me, that I can place all things at the feet of Jesus in my life that are not his will for my life. I confess that the kingdom of God is near in my life and I see the delivering power of his presence. I confess and command that, heal, that health and long life is my portion as I hear daily the Holy Spirit's directions and obey Christ's commandments. I come against the spirit of premature death and accidents waiting to happen. We come against them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Isn't this a good read? Wasn't that worth y'all seeing me doing this early? So I hadn't did it today. I do that every morning. It's 90, it's 90 days of these powerful readings for healing in those scriptures that you heard me quote. If you go over those scriptures and meditate on the word, meditate on those scriptures on healing, and in them you will find your healing. Healing, uh, uh, supernatural healing, is just like taking medicine. We're going to give you these pills. We want you to take them three times a day. Every eight hours, we want you to take a pill. And we take them pills faithfully. We take them pills. We take them pills. We take them pills. We don't ask no question. What's in the pill? Who made the pill? What about the pill? Hey, God bless you. I see you, uh, Brother Snipes. I see you. I can't see the uh, click to share the broadcast. You are now live, okay? But I see you. I can't. Somebody else is on there, too. God bless you. I see, but I can't. 
Oh, the little thing, I can't see what it is, what it is, what it is. Um, I have on, I have everything on live setup as well as the restream. Because the restream seems to be blurry. So I said, okay, Lord, you just told me how, I know how to go backwards and just set all these gadgets back up again. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got eight gadgets looking at me right now. So anyway, you, I see you over there. I see you over there. So, um. So I pray that prayer every every day. I have those prayers. Wow. Yeah, I know. I know. God, see, God, God is always before a fact, never after a fact. On the live streaming, it's 12 platforms, but they are not do doing clear. They're not doing clear. Are they doing, can you see over there? Beloved brother Snipes, can you see on Periscope if the other one, the restreaming is clear? Okay, is the restream clear tonight or not? Cause, Cause, on this gadget, I got you on you're on my phone, and so it won't say rescreen across the screen. If it's a, if it's the rescreen platform, I think he's gone to check for me. If it's the restream platform, you guys will see restream across it. If it's just one of my regular platforms without the restream, you will not see the restream. Here are the platforms. Thank you for the heart, somebody. I don't know who the body is. Who the body is? Let's see if I can see who the body is. Okay, that's you. That's Brother Snipes. Okay, did you go look and see? Did you go out and go and see if... Um, could you please, 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 pretty please, see if the restream is showing clear or blur? Okay, so if if uh, one platform goes down, there's other platforms you can go to. If any of them go down, if the enemy should decide to step in the room, because he can and he does, then there are other platforms that you can go to. There's other platforms that you can go through and on Periscope. and See, it's blinking now. My camera's blinking right to the night. I just did a blink, blink. Um, and this one is for Periscope and Instagram, I believe. I believe Periscope and Instagram have to have this backwards, I think. No, I want you to check um, Periscope. Because you're on Periscope right there. Go out and see if there's another one of me that says restream. Because this one that you're on should be clear. Because it's from my phone. But the restream is from my laptop. Anybody that's utilizing that. And I don't see anybody that's commenting uh, in those spaces on that. Praise God. It's 707. Y'all know what we do on 707. Praise God. Thank you for having church with me. F F S K. FSK, don't know your name, but I appreciate you. I thank God for you having church with me right now. It's always helping when you got, it always helps when you got somebody pushing you. You know, somebody saying, hey Amen, good job, thank you, thank you. See all that kind of stuff? It helps. Okay, Mahamad Mahmad. I might not be pronouncing your name right. I might not Mahmad. Praise God. But I appreciate you. I thank you, Mahmad. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Mamad, mother. So are you a mother? Or are you calling me mother? <laughs> Pam, okay. S call you. Who gonna call me? No, you can't call me. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Miss Pass. Pam. Okay, yes, that's what I'm Pam. It's like playing a game, y'all. Okay, I'm Pam, man. <laughs> okay, God bless you, Diane. I see, I see, I was waiting for you to come on, girl. You done missed the prayer. You got to come back to the beginning. I did a prayer on my um, invited four. Okay, oh, my, he done invited 4,000 peoples. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Brother Snipes. No, that's not Snipes. That's Bella Watson. That's my other son, Right? That's Watson. Yes. Okay, both see both my sons on here now. Y'all blessing. Y'all blessing ever since y'all been coming on. Brother Watson and Brother Snipes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, let me sing my song to y'all real quick. It's 707. It's on this here gadget. I can't do the gadget, but I know the song because the Lord put it in my spirit this morning. I didn't get up. I didn't do the live broadcast this morning. I was just too, too, too tired. 
this moving thing is whooping me. It's whooping this 79. This body showing me. Yeah, you think you think you younger than 79. Watch this. <laughs> and so all this packing and lifting every every bone in my body, everything that I didn't know was sore in my body is sore in this body. I didn't know I had muscles in places. But I got it this morning and the Lord gave me, I see you, Lord. I see you. No matter what the world may say and the world may do. I got up this morning, turn on the news. I turn it off, Lord, because I want to see you. I see you, Lord. I see you. No matter what the world may say and the world may do. I got up this morning, I put on my shoes. Run all around, tell the world that I see you. I see you, Lord. I see you. No matter what the world may say and the world may do, I get up in the morning, I turn on the news, I turn it off, Lord, because I want to see you. I see you, Lord, I see you in everything I say, everything I do. I said, I see you, Lord, I see you, Lord. Hallelujah, because I see you. Glory to your name, oh God. I see you in everything I do, in everything I say. That's all I want to do is see you. Just more of you, God. More of you in my life. More of you in my walk. More of you in my talk. More of you in everything that I do. Oh God, I can't get enough of you. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you right now, Lord Jesus, thanking you for your Holy Spirit, for your empowering, you empowering me, oh, oh God, because this body is frail. The spirit is willing, but the body, the body got to keep up with the spirit and the Holy Spirit can wear you out. Whew, I'm seeing that, oh God. Now, Lord, as I'm preparing, as I'm moving by faith with fear and trembling, I'm moving by faith to a place I know not of. I don't know nobody in Texas. But that's where you're sending me, oh God. You just, my spirit, Texas, 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 Texas. So I'm packing boxes like by faith. Like you said, I'm packing, I'm packing, I'm moving. Every evening the husband come in, I done did another wall. I done did another room. I done packed some more dishes. And he just looking at me. I know he don't understand it. Maybe he do understand because I'm asking him. To talk to you so that he and I can be in tune with what you are telling me to do. Because the head of every woman is her husband. My husband is the head, but you're giving me the vision. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. So, Lord, just help him to see what I see. Lord, help me. I, I, I was just thinking earlier, Lord, uh, about the situation. I said, Lord, you can have somebody call me from Texas. And said, we've seen you on your little broadcast and we got a space down here on a broadcast just for you. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ. We just need word. We don't need nobody to preach to us. We just want to put the word out there. Just like you do. You ain't got to change nothing. Just be yourself and we'll move you to Texas. We got a house already for you. You ain't got to pay no rent. See, this kind of God I serve. This kind of faith I got. Crazy faith. Oh, glory. But I can perceive all that. I can see that's how things could happen. I don't know. But I know, God, that I see you. I know that you have a prepared place for a prepared people. I know that you got me packing these boxes and I know I'm moving, going somewhere, but I won't be sitting in this house next year this time. Praise God. In this season, oh God, you said you take the foolish thing to confine the wise. One of the worst places in the United States with the COVID right now is in Texas. So why do I want to go to Texas? Don't make no sense. Seems like I should be running where I am, where I am on the other end of the, the state away from Texas. But it's a lot of stuff in California. This is one of the highest corona places. So there's no hiding place from this plague. And now my understanding is this plague is going to be here for a season. So we better get used to it. But the thing about it is you said in your word and you done showed me a couple of times in various scriptures. Go inside. Close your doors, stay inside until your anger, until your wrath, until you completed what you got to do because you're angry with mankind. We don't get up in the morning and see you. We get up in the morning and see a can of beer. We get up in the morning and see a joint. 
We get up in the morning and see a, a woman. We get up in the morning and see a boy or girl. We don't get up looking to see you, O oh God. We don't get up having melody in our heart unto you, O oh God. Many of us, you said you got something against us. We done left our first love. That's you. We loved you. We served you. We spent time with you. Now you've called us all back inside our homes to get our families together, to spend more quality time with you. And we don't do it. We ain't having it. We ain't having it. We can go out if we want to because we got to get fresh air. We got to exercise. We got to do this thing. So, Lord, help us, oh God. Speak to your churches. We're the church. Speak to us, oh God. Give these churches spiritual ears to, to, to do what you would have these churches, our bodies to do. Give us what to do, oh God. Help us to see people are dying. Left and right, people are still dying. I just got a conversation off the phone a minute ago from somebody who the mother of the church is dying because they had church and one of the other mothers had the corona. She brought it to, this, to the church. It's open. It should be closed. But oh no, we going to have church. See, we are the church. Oh God, we are the church. It's not in a building. It's not a building. It is us. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. In this season, open up our eyes of understanding. Help us to find what we need to find in the word of God because it's in there. Look on the black lives as I continue to look at the news, the things that they're doing to the African Americans in this country, making those four little young girls, little six-year-old, 14-year-olds, lay down on a hot cement, face down on their bellies with their little tops on that cement being burned. Because the police mistake, gave mistaken identity. They looking for a motorcycle from one state. And here the car got the same plate number from another state. Oh, our bad. We sorry. Oh, God. If it was some other little color, little cheering, they wouldn't have put them on the sidewalk. No way. They would have told them, go sit, on the, go sit on the curb. And one of the officers would have watched them. While we go get y'all popsicle, because we know it's hot. And then they would have talked to the mother of the person in authority, but not to the African American. They treat us like animals. But oh God, you're looking from heaven. As we're reading right now in the Exodus, you are blessing us and you are bringing us out just like you did the children of Israel. We are your children, 400 years in bondage, just like the children of Israel. You're bringing us out. You're bringing us out, but to bring us out, we got to stay in. Ha! Ah! To bring the children out of Israel, healthy, whole, they had to stay in till the death angel passed over. They had to stay inside until the death angel passed over. So, God, would you teach us to stay inside until the death angel passes over so none of our loved ones, none of our sons, none of our daughters' lives will be lost? This is not the time to go to the nail shop. They was on their way to the nail shop. Nail shop closed. Nail shop got some sense. It's a virus. I ain't doing no nails. They should have had them babies at home teaching them the ABCs, teaching them little girls how to be discreet, teaching them how to keep their self, teaching them how to clean themselves up, teaching them how to do each other's hair, teaching them how to do each other's nails, teaching them babies while they in the house. That's what this season is about, taking us back, taking us back to the old landmark where we used to do these things. We used to do our own hair. We go, I got to run to the shop. I got to go to the beauty shop and get my hair done. I've been doing my own nails. Yeah, I get to acrylic. I go to the shop every couple weeks to get my nails done. I ain't been in no shop since February, and I'm doing just fine. Ordered me some polish on, 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 on the app, the Prime, um, whatever the thing is. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that we can see behind the thing, that you're giving us spiritual discernment, that we can discern, and we can realize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but it's against powers, it's against principalities, it's against the spiritual weakness of this world. That's where the warfare is. That's where the, war, the ears are clogged up. The word of God says, having eyes to see, they won't see. Having ears to hear, they won't hear. We are a world, we're a country, we're a nation. The United States has been beguiled by the president, the pharaoh. We're reading about pharaoh, president, same difference, two Ps. Just change the wording, the letters in it. So Lord, as we get into the read, open up the eyes of the understanding of those that are listening. Open up their eyes and help them to see what's going on right in the word of God. If they need to repent for what their forefathers or their foreparents have done to the African American race, then so be it. 
But let us all learn to get along in love and unity. For God is love. Thank you for healing me, oh God, over and over again. Thank you for energizing me. Because when I came here and sat in this seat, I didn't have no energy. But you have empowered me as you always do, oh God. When I sit in the seat of obedience. When I sit in this seat, I'm sitting in the seat of obedience unto you, oh God. Because you've called me to read to these your sons and daughters. Seven minutes every evening. So I thank you, oh God, that I'm willing and I'm here. As I open my mouth to read, you read through me, oh God. I give you glory and I give you honor and I give you all the praise. And I call you done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Sister Carolyn, <clears throat> Sister Carolyn, I mentioned your name. Sister Jero and Pastor Jero were here the other day and they were telling me that Tim... I think it's Sister Octavia's brother's child, some kind of way, Brother Tim. And I said, yeah, no, Tim, that's Sister Carolyn, ain't Sister Carolyn. She said, yep, that's her sister. Small world, isn't it? Small world. Praise God. Okay, everybody, la da da and everybody, let's get into the read. Let's get into our read. Praise God. 5,000 likes. I don't know what that means. Praise God. <laughs> um... All right, so today is Wednesday, August the 5th, 2020. Okay, so this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of Moses. Um, God, has told, God has heard the cries of the people that have been under bondage in Egypt, in the United States, for over 400 years. The African American been in bondage in the United States over 400 years. He sent, a, he sent uh, Moses. He sent a George Floyd who poured his blood out in the streets that caused a movement to start in the United States who would be likened unto a Moses, the movement. The Black Lives Matter movement is the same as the Moses movement where he says, God said, I'm going to allow this to happen so that my children, the Israelites, my people, people that are people of God, black or white, we all Christians, but in particular, his people, the African Americans, is the ones who have been in the bondage, have been enslaved. He's going to let them go, setting them free. So as I'm reading, sometime I will say Pharaoh, President, so y'all know. Just kind of think about it. Put the president in that spot. Hardened heart. Done reach, done re, re, uh, reach, overturned everything that was made that was positive during the uh, Obama administration. He's overturned it. He ain't going to let it stand. That's his whole while being in there. Anything that was done that was good, I want to turn it over. It's not necessarily his doing. Possibly it's because God has hardened his heart. Because, he, he, because God has to get our attention. To get his children's attention. Okay? So that could be possibly what is going on. Alright, so here we go. Reading from Exodus. The 7th chapter. Um, the 10th verses. For Wednesday, August the 5th, 2020. I can't believe ways I have to wear masks. Yes, yes, yes. You should wear a mask everywhere you go. Anytime you leave your house, please, daughter. Please, sons. Because you may be saving someone's life by you wearing masks. A mask. It doesn't take anything away from you to simply put on a mask before you go in the store. Put on your mask if you got to go in the bank. Put on your mask wherever you go. You should wear, yes, you should wear masks wherever you're at. If you're walking the street and ain't nobody around you, then possibly no. But you shouldn't be just walking the street. You should be out on a mission. On purpose, going to the store, going to wherever. And when you are, because you don't know what's in the air. So you don't know if you're going to breathe it in or you don't know if you're breathing out. Maybe you may have it and don't know it. Many people have it, just like some people get the flu and other viruses. And they don't, uh, they don't show the signs or the symptoms, but they can contaminate someone else. So if you go out in, I don't care what state you're in, anywhere, you should wear a mask. Real simple. Real simple. 
to save someone else's life. If yours doesn't need to be saved, you should wear a mask. Yes, daughter, you should be obedient to the laws of the land and use wisdom and wear a mask. Amen. All right, so let's get into the read. Thank you. That was a good question. Thank you. Thank you. It's going to be this way for a minute. Yes, for a minute. Okay, let's get into the word. Um, Exodus 7, chapter, verses 10, and it says, And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called in the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, that he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said, Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, going out, he going to golf. <laughs> and thou shalt stand by the river's brink. Against he come, and the rod which was turned to a serpent shall thou take in thine hand. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go, what they may serve, that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, Hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith the Lord, In this shalt thou know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the river shall stink. And the Egyptians so loath to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, said, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the, waters of the, up, upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. I see you, daughter, I Talk to you after I finish reading. And Moses and Aaron did so, as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod, and he smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh, and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. The river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians digged around the river for water to drink, for they could not drink of the water of the river. And seven days were fulfilled after that the Lord had smitten the river. Chapter 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, Behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up, both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with my rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. 
And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. So then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away, my, take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me. When shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses, that they re may remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee and from thy houses and from thy servants and from thy people. They shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. <laughs> Could you imagine? But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. But they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go that they may serve me. Else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee and upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses and the houses of the Egyptians.